This activity starts with a recap of what squaring, square rooting, cubing and cube rooting means. It's to be played in a two-player format um, or with mini whiteboards so that we can all see how we're getting on with this concept. And once you think that you're quite good at estimating what the square, cubed, cubed root and square root of different numbers are, we're ready to have a go at actually trying to get more precise. This is a quick explanation of what you're going to see. And this is the first question. Here you've got to try and guess what value squared is going to give you 55. Well, you should think straight away that's in between 7 squared 49 and 8 squared 64, but a bit closer to 7 squared, so why don't we try 7.4? And you can see that says too small, so it's too small. So I'm going to try something a bit bigger. That says too big, so it's got to be in between 7.4 and 7.5. If I look, that's closer to 55, so I probably want to try something close to 7.4. And if you get within 0.1 of the actual target number, it will say, well done, you've succeeded. Try the others. This is to build up the concept of trial and improvement. And then you've got harder equations to build up the concept. And all you have to do is try and estimate using your square square rooting knowledge. Um, after that, though, your teacher is probably going to ask you to enter the formulas yourself to try and find out what the squaring option is and how you do that in Excel. And then the same for these ones. You enter the formulas each time, a bit like when you're going to do it on your calculator. The last sheet really focuses on the difference between when they ask you for a solution between one decimal place, two decimal places, and three decimal places. Here's one decimal place, so that would be 3.3, .3 because the difference between 35.9 is closer to 35 and 32.8. But to two decimal places, that's below, that's above. It looks like it's going to be 3.27. And then we could zoom in and get even more accurate, and in which case we'd probably want, in this case, 3.271. So the last two sheets are all about that. One of them you don't enter formulas for, so you can only select the things you're meant to edit, the final answer and your trials. And But in this sheet, you can edit everything because you're going to have to experiment. Here's an example. I've gone for 3.6 and 3.5. We can see 3.6 is too big. Even that's not in anymore because you're meant to work that out for yourself that it's too big. 3.5 is too small. So let's go for something close to 3.6, but not quite. I'm going to go for 3.58. Oh, that looks pretty close. That's even closer. What about 3.57, a bit smaller? Uh, and what about 3.56? OK, but we only want the answer to one decimal place. So in fact, I didn't need to do all these, and students often go too far. So it's in fact, this one is 1.66 off, so that's the correct answer. If you entered something more accurate, like 3.56, it doesn't turn green because it's only asking it for one decimal place. If you enter 3.6 to one decimal place, that's correct. You don't need to be more accurate. It will turn green if you are correct. Up to you to enter all the formulas, however. Best of luck.